Um, the other part that really was fascinating, and I, I really want an answer on it in part two, if you have it, was <laughs> when you talked about the, the Army Medical Museum. And the, your mm -hmm. book wasn't the first time I encountered it, but it, it every time strikes me as so fascinating of how you yeah. have all these surgeons sending specimens there, of kind of like studying the body, studying injury. And you have this beautiful story to start, it's, I think it's chapter two or three, mm -hmm. um, where the soldier comes and wants to see a body part and then is like, well, that's my leg, please, I want that back. Yeah. <laughs> and in part, it's kind of like, did he get it back? And how, who owns the body parts that are yeah. with the Army Medical Museum? Yeah, um, the Army, <laughs> the <laughs> government. Um, I wish that I had more on that story. I desperately looked, believe me, I tried to figure out who this guy was. You know, I don't even think that it specifies what limb it is that mm. was that was missed that was being you know displayed at the museum. I just that story just leaped out at me. Um, I think it, it's in Britain's memoirs, right, or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Um, I have. I have no idea whether he got his limb back. I am going to guess no. Yeah. Um, I, I have come across other stories of soldiers coming in and finding their limbs, whether they're apocryphal or not, I'm not sure, because mm. it makes for a good story, right? right. Um, but whether or not anyone actually lobbied the museum hard mm. in order to get their limb back, like in an, a letter writing campaign, I was never able to find any evidence mm. of that. So that's why this story just kind of really stood out to me, especially yeah. because it, as you point out, it really encapsulates this idea of power, right? Mm -hmm. Who owns the soldier's body? Yeah. And essentially it comes down to the army does, the government does. And that's what this, you know, the, the, um, the curator in the story says, did you sign an enlistment for three years of the war? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, your body belongs to the U.S. government until that enlistment expires. Mm -hmm. So your limb is mine, right? It mm -hmm. lives here. It doesn't belong to you. Um, and I just found that so, that concept mm -hmm. so wild, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's just so weird to think that. I mean, we all know the story of Sickles and how he is so proud of the his yeah. leg being on display and all, but yeah. You know, for general, okay, it's it's like you're famous, but for the average soldier, it's such a different kind of concept of like having to adjust. And we're right. all here also the stories of how difficult it is for these volunteers to shed their individualism into this army unit at the start of the war. And this really speaks to just the general problems I feel like that you have of turning the citizen into the soldier during the start yeah. of the war and during the duration of the war too. Yeah, certainly. And I think one of the things that stood out to me too was how, how much it complicated um, something that I think we've gotten really comfortable with. I think the book came out in 2007 or 2009, Drew Gilpin, Gilpin Faust's book on death in the Civil mm -hmm. War, right? That, that, that book, I think, really changed the way that a lot of us think about yeah. the, the process of being wounded and the p possibility of dying in the service and how sort of sacred the, the body was and how important mm -hmm. burial was and all of these things, how much that stood out in the minds of soldiers as they were serving, how much they feared, as you say, this loss of individuality, mm -hmm. um, that they would be buried somewhere on a battlefield. No one would ever know where they were, right? Um, and then at the same time, we see the Army Medical Museum sort of saying, well, Actually, what you are is a jumble of specimens that I would like to take and put into my museum, right? And there's such a clash there because that's stri absolutely stripping soldiers of their individuality. It's taking them, taking away the prospect of a, a sacred burial. Yeah. Um, and it's reducing the experience of death and mourning and, and burial to um, scientific uh, knowledge, right? What can what can we gain from your body even after death? Yeah. Um, and this is complicated. It really is because the you know 
the, the medical profession in the United States was at a crossroads. It, mm -hmm. This kind of, um, the body represented, soldiers' bodies represented an opportunity for them to, to learn um, in ways that were really important. As, as Shauna Devine has, has pointed out in her book on learning from the wounded, literally, right? Um, this was a really important moment for American medicine. And it's, it's too simplistic even, you know, for me to say, well, but it was unethical, right? It was unethical. And at the same time, it was something that doctors sort of, I understand why they wanted to do that and, and why it was justified to them. And so it was a very tricky chapter to write to kind of balance that. Mm -hmm.